Fulio saw his death from a mile away, and now his main op, Yongin Ace, has confessed to the murder in a music video, and the feds are on to him. And they talk about it in, uh, in, in rap videos and songs. You know, we're not gonna allow you to, to just arbitrarily run around and spray bullets into people's houses and cars. This seems like the end of the road for the rapper as his arrest for the murder appears inevitable. So how exactly did Ace slide on his most fierce op? Let's find out. How Young Gene Ace killed Fulio. Say they didn't got that Julio Fulio boy. I told him they were gonna get him. Yeah, nah, well I didn't tell him they were gonna get him. I just knew they were gonna get him. Cause the boy works hard to get guy. No, no, this world was hard to get shot on. Charleston White didn't hesitate to mock Fulio's death the same day he was gunned down in Tampa, Florida. Just like Charleston White, no one was surprised that Fulio had been killed in a senseless act of violence. In fact, everyone already knew who was behind the hit. All eyes have turned to one man, Yungin Ace, who has even confessed to the murder. But to understand how Yungin Ace succeeded in taking out his number one op, we need to look at the events that led to Fulio's death. June 21st, 2024 marked a special day for Julio Fulio. The Florida rapper was celebrating his 26th birthday and he wanted to make it a memorable occasion. Fulio shared his gratitude on social media, posting, God, thank you for allowing me to see another year and to celebrate another birthday. Just a week earlier, on June 14th, the rapper took to Instagram where he posted a flyer announcing that he would be hosting his birthday in Tampa and even gave away the time. Right away, his fans let him know that it was a bad idea. It's gonna be 4th of July over there. Fam, chill out, commented one fan, while another one said, yeah, you finna get your shit shot up if the ops come. Well, Fulio didn't heed to his fans' warnings. The rapper took to Instagram, inviting friends and fans to join him for a pool party at an Airbnb in Tampa on the 22nd of June. The event was heavily promoted on social media, promising a night of fun and celebration. Pool party start the day at 5, 6 o'clock. You already got the address, pull up, man. You got the address, pull up. If you need the address, them, you're right now. Pool party start at 5, 6 o'clock. The party kicked off with a bang. The atmosphere was electric with music blaring, people dancing, and everyone in high spirits. Friends, fans, and fellow artists all there surrounded Fulio to celebrate his special day. The rapper shared moments from the party on his Instagram story, showing off the lively crowd and the festive mood. Got me drinking, cuz. <laughs> I don't need drink, cuz. The party didn't go on as planned as the party began to get out of hand. The crowd grew larger and the noise levels escalated. According to Fulio's attorney, Louis Fusco, the event became too rowdy, drawing the local cops. Law enforcement arrived at the scene and they decided to shut down the party. Mr. Jones had been in Tampa to celebrate his birthday over the weekend, Fulio's lawyer told the press. Law enforcement reports indicate that he initially stayed at an Airbnb, but was asked to leave due to exceeding occupancy limits. Fulio took to Instagram to express his frustration. He posted that the police had shut down the party and kicked him out of the Airbnb. Police shut us down and kicked us out Airbnb. That's crazy work, he posted. The group couldn't let the cops dampen their spirits, so Fulio and his entourage, 20 deep as he described in a video, decided to continue the festivities elsewhere. They relocated to the Holiday Inn Tampa North on East Fowler Avenue, hoping to keep the birthday celebration alive. But as the night wore on, the celebration took a deadly turn. At around 4.40 a.m., gunfire erupted outside the hotel. Two cars were shot at, and four people were hit by the bullets. Among the victims was Julio Fulio. The Tampa Police Department later confirmed that one person was killed and three others were injured in the shooting. Sadly, Fulio died in the parking lot. Fulio's girl took to X to mourn her loss, posting, Y'all took my boyfriend from me. I hate y'all, and I won't be the only one crying. Law enforcement officials immediately launched an investigation into the ambush. Surveillance footage from the holiday Day in is being meticulously reviewed, but as of now, no suspects have been arrested. Despite the cops not identifying Fulio's killers, the rap industry knows who is behind the hit. Just one day after the murder, Fulio's main op released a music video snitching on himself. Young Gene Ace released a music video for the track Do It, where he raps, I don't even call him by his name, I call them n****s, Lil Do It, let's do it. N****s call his phone, say they got the low, I told them do it. Surprisingly, Fulio's fans suspected that Young Gene Ace had used one of the girls at the party to set up the rapper. According to some fans, she helped plan Fulio's party as well as helped set him up. Her posts from that night showed that she was with the rapper. However, one post seemed a little suspicious and seemed to give away their location. So what's up? Come to Truth 18. Julio Fulio opened till 6. The woman denied any involvement with the rapper's murder after she received numerous death threats from Fulio's fans.
comments. She took to her Instagram to clear her name, saying that she only posted what the rapper approved. We only shared a story post that we were approved to post by he himself for us to share. The post of our flyer that we were tagged in a post too, that the artist himself posted. The whole night went perfect. No bad vibes, no negative energy. This was completely unexpected being how well the night went. Please stop with the fake rumors and posts which are entirely inaccurate and false, she posted. And even as Fulio's fans tried to blame her for the rapper's death, he had been warned numerous times that there was a bounty for his head. In an X space that surfaced, Fulio was warned that there are people out to get him, but he brushes it off. You gonna cash out on your tag one day. I'm not to answer the cut. I'm scared of y'all. I don't want no more. Well, it seems like Fulio was caught with his guard down, but this wasn't the first time his ops had slid on him. In April, Fulio had posted on Instagram about multiple attempts on his life and losing friends to jail and graveyards. These last couple months and years of my life been tragic. God been trying to send me a message. Multiple attempts on my life, I keep surviving. I keep losing my brothers to jail and graveyards, but I know the Most High doing everything for a reason. He let me walk again for a reason. The rapper had survived three shootings before his luck finally ran out. So how had he survived his past assassination attempts? Murder rap. I think about death every day. I could die today, uh, I could lose one of my dogs today, uh, I could lose a family member today. Uh. Get real today. The most recent attempt on Fulio's life came a few months before his death. On October 6, 2023, Fulio found himself in a shootout that almost claimed his life. On that fateful night in his hometown of Jacksonville, Fulio was driving his black Dodge Challenger. As Fulio drove through the 3100 block on 18th Street W, the peace of the night was shattered by the sound of gunfire. According to various law enforcement sources, suspects opened fire on Fulio's vehicle, riddling it with bullet holes. The attack was swift and brutal, leaving Fulio with a gunshot wound to his foot and was quickly transported to UF Health Jacksonville for treatment. The next day, an Instagram story post appeared, seemingly from one of his parents. The message read, keep Fulio my son in y'all prayers. He was shot last night in his hating city. Two years earlier, he was in a similar situation. On November 8, 2021, Fulio was at a house on Ernest Street, recording music with several others. The house, which had already been the subject of numerous complaints from neighbors about suspicious activity, became the center of a violent confrontation. Julio Fulio told police he heard gunshots when he walked walked outside and the shooters were in a dark colored truck or SUV. Fulio, armed with two guns, returned fire in what he claims was self-defense. I shot back in self-defense, y'all dumb. I shot back in self-defense. You don't think if I did something illegal, I would be in jail. The police put me in the back of the car. Fulio was grazed by a bullet, but refused to go to the hospital. Instead, he was seen being escorted to a car, limping from his injury. And in 2020, he was involved in yet another shooting, which saw him go to the hospital where he recorded a video dissing his ops. The shot me, but didn't kill me. I'm Kendrick. <laughs> Stupid. Fulio is no saint either. Word on the street is that he has caused young Gene Ace immense pain and suffering after killing people close to the rapper. In 2018, Fulio and his gang would slide on Ace in an incident that will forever cause Ace pain and suffering. Just three days before the deadly shooting, Ace took to social media to post this photo with an ominous caption. Little did he know that only a few days later, he would be fighting for his life while his closest friends and brother would lose theirs. On June 5th, 2018, Ace's younger brother, Trayvon Bullard, was set to celebrate his birthday. Alongside them were close friends Royale Devon Smith Jr. and Jacoby Dashad Groover. The group went to a local spot for the birthday dinner. As the evening progressed, the group was in high spirits. Little did they know that the night would take an unimaginable turn. After the dinner, the four young men left the venue. They settled into their Chevrolet, ready to continue their night elsewhere. But as they pulled away, the unexpected horror unfolded in a flash. A car, seemingly out of nowhere, approached their vehicle. Without warning or provocation, the night air was pierced by the sound of gunfire. The Chevrolet became a target as it was showered with bullets in a relentless attack. Youngin Ace, amidst the chaos, made a split-second decision fueled by instinct and brotherly love. He leaned over in a desperate attempt to shield his friend in the driver's seat, risking his own life in the process. When they shot it up, I was trying to shield my little brother. Tragically, his efforts were in vain, and the driver, along with the two other passengers, succumbed to their injuries. Ace was rushed to the hospital where he fought for his life. In a shocking turn of events, he was kicked out of the hospital before he could fully recover. He didn't have insurance which the medical facility deemed more significant than his critical injuries. Meanwhile, Ace's legal troubles compounded when it was discovered that earlier on the day of the shooting, the group had visited a gun shop on University Boulevard. Video evidence from the store led to Ace being charged with a probation violation for firearm involvement. Facing the aftermath of the shooting and the legal repercussions of his actions, Ace surrendered to authorities. He was charged with violating his probation from a 2017 accessory conviction related to an attempted robbery. His probation terms explicitly prohibited 
prohibited him from firearm possession, and the video of Bullard handling a gun was sufficient for the judge to deny bail. Adding to his torment, Ace was also denied the opportunity to attend his brother's funeral, a heart-wrenching denial of closure. Having gone through all this pain and suffering, Ace was determined to get back at his main op. He relentlessly went after Fulio and almost got him three times before he was finally successful. But before he could get to Fulio, he also wreaked havoc on his affiliates. Just a few months before Fulio was murdered, Young Jean Ace and his crew caught one of Fulio's affiliates lacking. This was none other than Rico Osama, a name well known in the local rap scene. On the 12th of December, 2023, the west side of Jacksonville became the scene of a harrowing triple shooting that claimed Rico Osama's life. It was in the late afternoon when the sound of gunfire shattered the usual hum of activity along San Juan Avenue and Jams Road. Witnesses described the chaos that ensued as approximately 30 gunshots rang out, echoing off the storefronts and sending bystanders into a state of panic. The rapid succession of shots was so intense that it drew the immediate attention of an off-duty officer in the vicinity who promptly alerted the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office to the unfolding crisis. The officers responded with urgency, rushing to the scene at 6300 San Juan Avenue where they were met with a sight of devastation. There, they discovered three adult males, victims of the shooting, their bodies bearing the brutal marks of the attack. The parking lot of the business plaza was littered with shell cases. One business owner, whose establishment faced the brunt of the violence, recounted the terror of the moment. He spoke of how at least one bullet had pierced through the walls of his business, striking a refrigerator and leaving a chilling reminder of the narrow escape from what could have been an even greater loss. The plaza building itself and several parked cars were riddled with bullet holes, a silent witness to the ferocity of the attack. One individual had been killed, and two others sustained injuries severe enough to require immediate medical attention. The victims were swiftly taken to the hospital, where the reality of the situation set in. For one of their homies, it was the end of the road, as they battled for survival. Sadly, pictures on his personal Facebook page show him with his newborn child, born the same month he was gunned down. Behind all this death and destruction are two gangs, ATK and KTA. These two gangs, led by Ace and Fulio, have Jacksonville in a chokehold, and the reason behind their beef is truly unbelievable. So how did these gangs start, and why are they even beefing? ATK Vibes, KTA. There was a time before Jungin Ace and Fulio caused mayhem in Jacksonville. In their place was an infamous gang that has since gone underground with street sources claiming that it died. It was within this environment that a young rapper, Jungin Ace, began to make a name for himself, not just with his music, but as a figure of emerging influence in the gang landscape. Ace's rap career helped him gain more clout in the streets and within the gang. As Jungin Ace's clout grew, his interactions with the gangs on the east side of Jacksonville intensified. Ace, with his charisma and street credibility united the West and East, weaving a network of loyalty and control that spanned the entire city. The ATK Gang, which stands for Ace Top Killers, became a force that commanded attention and respect. As the ATK Gang solidified its grip on Jacksonville, a rival gang was rising in the city. The KTA, short for Kill Them All, was on the rise. The start of KTA was rooted in the remnants of the notorious Problem Child Entertainment Gang, PCE, which had once sown chaos across the city. The PCE had been crippled by law enforcement when its top 10 members fell into the hands of justice and were charged with murder and firearm offenses. This left a void that was quickly filled by those who remained, hungry for leadership and direction. Enter Charles Jones, or as the streets knew him, Fulio. With the remnants of PCE rallying behind him, Fulio orchestrated a takeover of the North and South territories. But what led the two gangs to go to war? According to word on the streets, the reason for the ATK versus KTA feud was likely an incident of disrespect between the two gangs dating back years. The incident occurred during a rap conversation concert in November 2015, where members from both gangs were present. Despite the tension between the groups, they attempted to form a truce by shaking hands. However, one member refused, leading to a fist fight and ultimately, a series of retaliatory shootings. Not long after this, the first brutal murder took place, the murder of Zion Brown. Zion Brown's death was a significant turning point in the gang war. Not only was Zion Brown active in the streets, he was rapper Fulio's blood cousin. Their ops decided to take things too far and murdered him in his home. It was around 1.30 in the morning when the family's back sliding door was broken by a brick. Inside the house, Brown's 16-year-old sister was woken up by the noise and called 911 desperate for help. But before the law enforcement could arrive, the situation escalated. A figure emerged from the darkness, stepping through the remnants of the glass door. The gunman made his way into the kitchen and then into the living room where the teenage girl, along with her nine-year-old cousin and her brother, Zion Brown, had gathered in the living room. The gunman let off a series of shots, each one a piercing echo of terror. The 16-year-old girl tried to take cover behind 
behind a couch, but the bullets found her, striking both of her legs. Her young cousin was hit in the neck and right arm, and Zion Brown was fatally wounded. As the community of Jacksonville's Cedar Hills Estates awoke to the aftermath of the tragedy, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office was already deep into the investigation of the triple shooting that had claimed the life of Zion Brown and injured two young girls. The investigation took a significant turn when the wounded 16-year-old girl provided a crucial piece of information. She knew the shooter, not just a face in the crowd, but someone she recognized as a Facebook friend and the boyfriend of one of her friends. This revelation steered the detectives in a new direction, and the name DeAndre Thomas emerged as the prime suspect, a man with close ties to Fulio's main op, Youngin Ace. DeAndre Thomas, a 19-year-old student from Orange Park High School, was no stranger to the law. His past was filled with a series of arrests in Clay County, including drug, possession, and a string of burglaries, one of which involved the theft of a firearm. In fact, Deontra and Youngin Ace were both implicated in that robbery seven months before Brown's murder, where the two conspired to rob someone who was reportedly selling weed. Shots were fired into that home, nearly missing a couple and a one-year-old child. After his arrest, Ace pleaded no contest. This connection between Zion Brown's killer and Youngin Ace intensified the rivalry and took it to new heights. The police, armed with this information, launched a manhunt for Thomas. Then the next evening, around 8.30 near Butler Boulevard and Belfort Road, the search came to an end. DeAndre Thomas was arrested. He was charged with one count of murder for the death of Zion Brown and two counts of attempted murder for the injuries inflicted upon the two girls. However, the story didn't end with Fulio's affiliate's death as Zion Brown's family were forced to move out of the house for fear of retaliation after Brown's sister snitched. This isn't the only time Yungin Ace and his KTA gang would kill Fulio's family member. Soon after, they murdered Fulio's little brother. 16-year-old Adrian Gaynor Jr., alias Bibby, a student at Grand Park High School, met his death in an incident that shocked the city. The sudden and violent loss of this young life, cut short in the parking lot of his friend's residence, sparked an outcry for justice. The death hurt Fulio so much that he released a song in his honor. On February 25, 2019, at the Hilltop Village Apartments parking lot on West 45th Street, Bibby was found lifeless, the victim of multiple gunshot wounds. The area around the gazebo, where he had been spending time, was littered with dozens of shell casings from a rifle, tracing the path of his desperate attempt to escape his assailant. Witnesses reported the teenager being chased down. They saw Bibby fall and was struck by bullets as he tried to shield his head with his hands in a futile effort to protect himself. According to the arrest warrant, it was Hakeem Robinson, alias K. So, an ATK affiliate, who, in a cold-blooded act, approached Bibby and shot him at close range in the back of the head, even as the young teen continued to try to defend himself. The arrest warrant also revealed that Queso had taken to social media after Bibby's death, posting several photos and videos where he appeared to be bragging about Bibby's murder. And it seems Queso and his gang did more than brag about their hit on Bibby. As it turns out, they went as far as to disrespect his grave and dissed his relatives every chance they got. They tore up his grave, they spit on his grave, they urinated on his grave, they made fun of our rallies or whatever, they made fun of us marching, they mocked us every chance that they got. Fulio had his revenge the very next month with the brutal murder of Corbin Odell Johnson. On July 11, 2019, the 18-year-old FaceTimed his friends at 4 in the afternoon. Little did they know, this would be the last time they would see Corbin alive. Corbin had told his friends he was at Amazon for a job interview and was awaiting a ride. His father, Corey Mormon, recounted dropping his son off for another job interview with UPS at 5 in the afternoon, only to pick him up 45 minutes later. He later drove Corbin to his mother's residence on Biscayne Bay Circle at 8 in the evening. His mother, Melissa Melissa Mormon Jackson would later report that the last time she saw her son was at 9.30 that night. The clock ticked on, and the following morning, at 8.45, Corey sent a text message to his son, which would go unanswered, setting off alarm bells in his father's heart. By 6.30 in the evening, on July 13th, the family's concern had escalated to action, and they officially reported Corbin missing. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office began their investigation, but never made any progress. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into a year of agonizing uncertainty. As the first anniversary of Corbin's disappearance approached, the family planned a memorial at Riverside's Memorial Park, but fate had written a different ending to Corbin's story. On the evening of July 11, 2019, a man clearing land off Utsi Road made a shocking discovery. Corbin's skeleton was found, wrapped and buried, bringing a tragic end to the search. KTA's head honcho Fulio was all up on Instagram making fun of Corbin after the discovery was made. And Corbin, they let Corbin get kidnapped, man. That's crazy, man. The Corbin. Oh, this stupid ass kid now. They found a bones. Neither Fulio nor Ace are saints. And with Fulio dead and Ace confessing to the murder, it's only a matter of time before cops close in on him. You know, we're not going to allow you to, to just 
arbitrarily run around and spray bullets into people's houses and cars. Is this the end of the Jacksonville gang war? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.